Okay, so we're looking for opportunities to understand what Lacan means by this absolute big O other that is unknown to us. I'm on page 40. I'm looking around here. I see another reference to this. The bottom of section 3, page 40, the paragraph begins this distinction. This distinction between the big O other with a big O, that is, the other insofar as it's not known, and the little o other with a small o, that is, this other who is me, the source of all knowledge, is fundamental. This is what we were just talking about. Little o others correspond to the imaginary. And they bring with them a certain sense of knowledge, an experience of knowing, the source of all knowledge. Big o other corresponds to the symbolic, to the realm of language and to this field of the unknown. We're trying to make sense of this now. What Lacan is just pointing out here again is that the distinction between these two forms of otherness, one imaginary, represented by the lowercase o, the other symbolic, represented by the uppercase o, is fundamental. Reading on. Notice on page 41, gets back into the big O other and he starts using the word structure. And then he leaves off. The next big moment for us in understanding what he means by the symbolic, this big O other here, is on page 50. He starts by talking about the speech of the psychotic. Sal, who is speaking when there's a hallucination like this? But then he very quickly steers away from that and brings us back at the bottom of page 50 to this big O other, the symbolic. Who normally speaks in reality for us? Is it reality exactly when someone speaks to us? The point of the remarks I made to you last time on the little o other and the big o other, the other with a small o and the other with a big o, was to get you to notice that when the big o other, the other with a big o speaks, it is not purely and simply the reality in front of you, namely the individual who is holding forth. The big o other is beyond that reality. Okay, the reality he's talking about here, don't get it twisted is not the real. The reality he's talking about here is the imaginary reality that is held up whenever somebody speaks to you. Somebody, this individual who is holding forth, this little O other. Lacan is here saying that when the big O speaks, it's not speaking at the same register at which your roommate addresses you. It's not speaking at the same register at which a little o shows up in your life. The other, he says, is beyond that imaginary reality. So what is this beyond? It's connected, but also beyond. What are we getting at here? Again, Lacan comes back to this early notion in his career of true speech, also oftentimes referred to as full speech. In true speech, the big o other and here we mean the symbolic as a structuring or positioning force built into language use. When you speak, you draw on language, and language brings with it a whole host of positionings. He, she, him. They, theirs, it. Think of all the pronouns in the world and the ways to mix those up, and the ways that we now oftentimes identify with certain pronouns, just to let people know where within the linguistic universe we would like them to position us. It's a good way to start accessing some of these ideas. In true speech, the big O other is that before which you make yourself recognized. Before which, perhaps here he means in front of which, but you can make yourself recognized by it only because it is recognized first. Now, what does that mean? It means that in order to position yourself within the symbolic, you have to first accept the positioning agency 
of the symbolic itself. In other words, you have to accept its authority to position you and everybody else. It has to be recognized for you to be able to make yourself recognized. This process of accepting the symbolic, accepting that there is a society with rules and regulations and linguistic experiences that position you in certain camps, in certain genders, in certain families, in certain ethnicities, and so on and so forth, is called alienation. A word that we've used in these lectures has also been castration. It's another technical term. It doesn't mean someone's physically operating on your junk. It means that you have accepted that there are positioning forces at work in your world that are beyond your control, that are oftentimes also beyond your knowledge. Little boys and girls are oftentimes made before they have long before they have any sense of self. Their rooms are painted blue or pink even before they're born. These are the forces of the unknown positioning agencies of the symbolic that get imposed upon us. And part of what it means to become a normal read neurotic subject is to accept this to accept that we are aliens in a world not of our own creation, with rules that are not within our control. That process is called alienation. Another technical word for it in Lacanian psychoanalysis is castration. This is the world Lacan is describing here by the big other. He goes on on page 51 to talk about the positioning force. Again with this example, I am your man, you are my woman. Notice this paragraph beginning in saying to someone. Let's check this out. In saying to someone, you are my woman, you are implicitly saying to her, I am your man. And here, of course, just assume the heteronormativity of what he's saying. It could just as easily be something else, something totally different but you are saying to her first, you are my woman. That is, you are establishing her in the position of being recognized by you. In other words, you're saying, I recognize you as not just a woman, but my woman. That's what's happening first. But implicit in this is a request that she respond. Not when, sometimes without even saying it. A squeeze of the hand could also communicate, and I am your man, and you are my man, and so on and so forth. You are establishing her in the position of being recognized by you, by means of which she will be able to recognize you in turn. This kind of reciprocity of recognition is what's happening here. My speech positions you, and it elicits a response from you that is implicit in my own speech that positions me. I am your man invites you to say, This speech is therefore always beyond language because the positioning work that it does here is structural. And such a commitment, like any other utterance, even a lie, conditions all the discourse that follows. And here, what I understand by discourse includes all kinds of stuff. Acts, steps, the contortions of puppets, yourselves included, caught up in the game. I'm going to emphasize that. Caught up in the game. Beginning with an utterance, a game is instituted, entirely comparable to what happens in Alice in Wonderland when the servants and other characters in the Queen's Court start playing cards. A few lines down, he emphasizes the rules of the game. Once you have entered the play of symbols, you are always forced to act according to a rule. Page 51. This gives us the final confusion that brings clarity to what he means by the symbolic, but also shows us how it hangs together with the imaginary and the real. Namely, at the level of the game. That's what we're going to discuss next.